Welcome to worship at Northminster Presbyterian Church. I'm Pastor Jack McNary, along with Carol Lindley and Lynn Cunningham and Alex Grambo and Heidi Van Riggen Mortar as we lead in worship for this wonderful day. The last few weeks we've been talking about knowing God, about seeking God, about knowing the truth of God. And today we want to look at how to trust in God. So join us for worship on this wonderful day, for this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Join me in the call to worship. The Lord of life is risen. Alleluia to Jesus the Son. We sing songs of praise and victory. Alleluia to God the Father. We want all the world to hear the good news. Alleluia to the Holy Spirit. Let us worship our ever risen Lord. Join me in our unison prayer. Loving God, who came to us in Jesus Christ so that we would seek you, know you as truth, and then trust in you. We are here to give you praise. Everything good 
we have comes from you. We acknowledge that we are distracted by the issues of, these, of life these days. They cause us to live in fear, not faith. They make us exhausted each day instead of excited in you. Forgive us and help us to put our faith and trust in you. Bless us each day as we strive to bless others. You are the one true and great God. All glory be to you this day and every day. Amen. and offerings. This is the time we need to continue to support our church. Our giving to Christ and his church is a sign that our faith continues even as we cannot gather together physically. Northminster is still reaching out to those in need and loving our family of faith. Please remember to give so that we can give to others. Your support is needed even more in these difficult days. May God bless you as you support this church in prayer and praise. Our choir director, Alex Grambo, has put together a quartet of several of his friends from Sac State. And they are here as the Glory and Honor Quartet to share with us, Lord, I want to be a Christian. In my heart, in my heart. 
beautiful. We all, I hope, want more of Jesus in our heart, to be like him and to know him and to put our trust in him. Now, I want you to do something, kids. I want you to go right now to your parents while I'm talking and ask them for a dollar bill. Tell them you have to have a dollar bill right now. And now while you scramble around looking for money, and by the way, because this is a children's sermon and I'm in charge, at the end of the time, you get to keep the dollar bill. I'll be hearing from your parents, I'm sure, about that. I want you to look at it. On the front of the dollar bill is a picture of whom? George Washington, who was what? The first president of the United States. But even more important, on the back of it has these four important words. In God we trust. It's a pledge. It's a promise. It's our acknowledgement of who God is in our lives and in our country. Now, we don't always live up to it, do we? As a people, as kids, as adults, as a nation. But we say, in God we trust. Do you trust in God? What are some ways that you can trust in God in these days? Well, you can probably trust in God to help you with your homework, because from what I hear from parents, they're struggling to figure out your assignments with you. So you can trust in God to help you to be with you. You can trust in God to help keep you healthy and safe as you stay at home. And if you go out, you wear a mask and you wash your hands and do all the things that are necessary these days. You can trust God in prayer by giving to God your heart, your soul, and all your worries and concerns, because God is there with you right now. In God we trust, we say. Let's try and put that into practice. Let's try to live that out every day in our lives, with your sisters and your brothers, with your friends, your neighbors, whoever it is, help them to trust in God just as you are doing. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we want to trust in you. So come near to us and help us to fully place our trust in who you are and what you've done for us. Thank you for that love. And we pray in your most holy name. Amen.
as we come together in prayer this day. May God come to each of us and watch over us like he does that sparrow. This week, we celebrate with Ben Amarine on Monday, who is having his seventh birthday, as well as Victoria Roth, who is having a birthday on Saturday. To both of you and to others out there, a joyous and happy birthday. Let us come together in prayer. Loving God, you watch over us. You're with us. You know us, and you care for every part of us. Lord, we want to trust you in these days, but we're struggling. We're tired of all of this. We want it to be over. We want the tough times to disappear, and the times of joy and celebration to return. Lord, give us patience in these days. For the day is coming soon where we'll, like the birds, be sprung from our cages and be allowed to come out and worship together, fellowship together, and to simply be together in you. Lord, there are people in our families, in our congregations, among our friends who are struggling these days, those who are confined to nursing and care centers, for those of us at home, for those who need some surgeries and yet cannot have them yet or have had falls and are now trying to recover. There are those who indeed have been affected directly by the COVID-19 virus. We ask in these days of mourning and grief that you would draw close to those people. Lord, our nation, our world is grieving for the loss of so many. And we're trusting in all sorts of things these days. But help us to put our trust most deeply in you. O oh, holy God. We lay before you everything, everything about ourselves, everything that is worrying us, causing us to be anxious, causing us to think of ways that we can solve all the problems instead of putting them before you. Loving God, take our worries and our concerns and wrap them in your love by your magnificent hands. God, hear us. Hear us as we pray to you, each and every one of us. Hear us as we pray to you the words that you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
the word of the Lord comes to us first from the Old Testament, the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Hear now the word of the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. And then from Matthew's gospel, hear this story of an encounter with Jesus. Now behold, one came and said to Jesus, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but that one that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. The young man said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go and sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ever struggle with trust issues? Trust with another person? Trust in a circumstance, a situation that you're facing? Maybe you're Struggling right now, whom do I trust? Do I trust the politician? Do I trust the scientist? Do I trust myself and my own needs and wants? Sometimes it's more difficult to trust than to not trust. Recently, I was struggling with an issue, an idea, a problem that was ongoing in my life, and I wasn't sure what to do about it. And I began to work it through and think it through. What could I do? What were the issues? How could they be resolved? I thought about it day and night, maybe like you do, especially at night. And as I went through all the various angles and possibilities, I was still struggling to come up with an answer. I looked at it from the view of practicality. I looked at it from the view of a psychologist. At university, I began as a psychology major. And while I graduated with a degree in history, I was only two credits short of having a degree in psychology. And for 36 plus years, I have been counseling other people. But that wasn't helping either. And then I did the thing that I should have done, that any good pastor would do. I took it to God in prayer. And what God said to me was really a one word answer. Trust. Trust. What could I say? I hadn't been listening. What are you lacking in trust today? And how do you handle the problems that you have before you? We hear this story of the rich young ruler, as he is called many times. We only know from Luke's version that he was a, a ruler. We know that he was a young man, and we know he was rich. And we can surmise from that 
that most of his wealth came from his family and not something he had done yet because he was young. And he came to Jesus looking for an answer. He said, good teacher, rabbi, is the word he used. And Jesus' response, of course, is, why are you calling me good? And he tells of his own identity and his drawing together of himself with God in this, that if God is good and Jesus is good, that God and Jesus are good. But the young man wanted to know, what do I have to do to gain eternal life? Jesus gives him the standard answer. Fulfill all the commandments. Live out your life fulfilling those ten commandments that Moses brought down to the people of Israel. And he said, well, which ones do I have to keep? And so Jesus gives him a list, numbers six, seven, eight, and nine. And then he also quotes Leviticus about loving your neighbor as yourself. And the young man hears what Jesus is saying and then says to Jesus, well, well, I've kept all those since my youth. Now, what's interesting here is the word in Greek for kept really is the word cherished. I have cherished these Ten Commandments. I have looked at them. I hold them in high esteem, and most of them I'm kept. You and I, if we were asked the same questions, well, yeah, I pretty much, I haven't been stealing from anybody lately or doing some of these other things. But that really wasn't what the young man was saying, was he was saying, I treasure these, I cherish these, I treasure them. I think they're wonderful sayings. Jesus hears that in his voice. He says, well, there's one more thing you need to do. This is not a prescription for every person, but it is for that young man because his possessions had become his God. Notice the one commandment that Jesus doesn't say at this point because he already knows that that's not on the list for this young man. And that's the first commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and have no other gods before me. But he did. The young man had all his possessions, all his fields and lands, really, is what the words would tell us. And he says, get rid of all of that. Give it to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Jesus says this earlier in Matthew's gospel, reminding all of us that wherever our treasure is, there your heart will also be. And then he adds that second part. Come and follow me. Well, the story doesn't end with a happy ending. And hearing these things, the young man went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He would rather trust in the things that he had than the trust in the Lord. He was also forgetting the words of Proverbs, that Solomon-esque saying of trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Trust. Put your total faith in the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. Put everything that you have in him. Don't put it in things. Don't put it in possessions. Don't even put it in other relationships. Put it in the Lord with all your heart. And the heart here is not only meaning wholeheartedly, but in the Hebrew idea, the heart is the center of our spiritual soul, the center of who we are. In the very depths of our being, trust in the Lord. 
and lean not on your own understanding. Don't trust on your own intellect, your own wisdom, your own thoughts and recollections. Trust in the Lord. The young man was not trusting God, but trusting himself to solve the problems that he had in life and wondering what works can I do to get eternal life. You see, trusting in God is not really about ourselves. It's, again, about God. As I was praying, finally, to God about this ongoing struggle I was having, he brought me back to the place of things that I have known for the 50 years that I have been a Christian. The first thing he told me to do is confess. Confess my lack of trust in him. You know, sometimes it's difficult for us to confess our sins, and especially when we tell ourselves, well, God already knows my sins. Why do I need to speak them? Why do I need to say them? Because we say them, they become reality. The sins are nebulous and ethereal. They're out there away from us until we speak them with our lips until we come before God and admit who we are and what we have done. Take it to the Lord in prayer. That's the first thing we need to do. Our lack of trust is a sin. And so we need to confess that to God. The second thing the Lord reminded me of is after I confess, I need to repent. I need to do more than just tell God I've done the wrong things, but I need now to change direction. You know, the word repent has the idea that I'm going one way, and now in repentance, I'm going totally the opposite way. I've been turned the wrong way, and now I've been turning and am turning the right way. I'm repenting, setting a new direction for myself. And then lastly, he says, resolve. Resolve to trust in God. Resolve in your heart to follow God in all your ways. To take the issue, the struggle, the habit, the worry, the anxiety, whatever it is, and resolve to put it in the hands of God. Don't hang on to it any longer. It's one of my problems, is I hang on to things longer than they need to be hung on to. In fact, oftentimes I will give them up to the Lord. And then when things don't happen in my own timing, I take them back. And then, well, we start the three-pronged steps all over again to confess and then to repent and then to resolve it with God again. And to know that if I do trust in God to guide me, he will do so. In whom do you trust? Yourself or God? Some of you know I like acrostics, words that you spell out and then each of the letters means something. Well, for trust, I would say it this way. T, to, R, rely, U, unreservedly, to the S, spirits, T, teaching. To rely unreservedly to the spirits' teaching. Don't lean on your own understanding. Lean on what the Spirit is telling you through God's Word and in prayer. That's how we do it. Trust is hard. Trust is difficult. Trust takes time. Many years ago, 
Louisa Stead, was with her family on a beach day on Long Island. And she and her husband and her daughter were enjoying the beautiful day when suddenly they heard the cries of a young boy who was caught out into the water and he was drowning. And her husband jumped up and ran into the water to save him. And as often times happen, and the time is coming here in Sacramento on the summer where people will be on the rivers, the one trying to save the other drowns along with them. In those brief moments, she lost her husband. Her daughter lost her father. And a few months later, showing that trust in God, she wrote down these words. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. May we do so every day. Give your troubles, your struggles to God. Let him take them and build trust between you and him. Trust on the wisdom of God and not the wisdom of others and of yourself. Acknowledge him and he will make your paths and mine straight. Let us pray. Ever loving God, help us to give our hearts to you. Help us to give those things that we're holding on to that we need to let you take a hold of. Help us to let go of our problems. Help us to well, turn our struggles into stepping stones in faith and in trust. We give them all to you because you already know them and we offer them to you as we would rely unreservedly on the Spirit's teaching. Amen.
what's holding you back from trusting in Jesus today. Take whatever the problem is, whatever the struggle that you have, and trust in Jesus. Give it to him. Confess it. Repent of it. And then resolve to live in him. Until such time as we meet again, let us go in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.